Hello and welcome to February's Tech of the Month, the show where we bring you the tech highlights from the last four weeks. So coming up in this show, we have Stefan with some new tyres. We've got Simon Smythe with some very swanky shoes from Specialized and also a look at this Lapierre air code. But first, we're going to have a look at the biggest news stories that we published on the Cycling Weekly site in the last month. Kicking things off is a look at Brexit. So at the time of filming this, most bike brands were still working out exactly what Brexit was going to mean for them as a brand. We published some really big stories about Campagnolo no longer selling clothing direct to the UK market. Uh, and the same for Brooks as well, not selling their saddles direct from their website to the UK market. On the plus side, the distributor for both of those brands said there's really no need to worry about stock for UK customers at the moment. Now, bike prices is another matter. We've already seen Specialized hike their prices at the end of last year, as well as Giant. And towards the start of this year in January, Trek also incre increased their prices. Now, I spoke to one bike brand that didn't want to go on the record, and they said that their prices will be going up between 10 and 20% as a direct result of Brexit. So that is definitely something that we're expecting to see a lot of during the course of this year. Now on to something a little bit more shiny. We heard from Tom Griffith and Gary Elmer. They are based in Wisconsin in the USA and they say they've created the first ever spray chrome painted carbon bike. Now, whether this is the first spray chrome painted carbon bike is actually slightly debatable. We have spoken to uh, other frame painters that say they've seen this before, but what's different is that these guys have created a way to mass produce these bikes. So they say they can produce one in as little as 15 minutes for less than $100 a pop. So what's really cool is they actually created this process uh, on a 400 acre farm in a shed. And they tell me that was built with plastic sheeting, two fans and 1500 staples. Uh, so it's certainly something that is pretty unique and not something we've seen before. It's something they are looking to sell to a big brand. So will we see many, many chrome painted bikes in 2022 or even 2024? Well, possibly we'll have to watch this space. The other big news story that we covered over the last four weeks was the tech trends for 2021. Now the number one on that list has to be 12 speed Shimano Dura Ace. It is Shimano's 100 year anniversary this year and based on patents that came to light at the end of last year, we are expecting to see a new 12 speed group set. So we are gonna to have to watch that space, but it's certainly something that we are eagerly anticipating. And of course, we are seeing more and more pro team bikes coming out. And there are some pretty cool machines on display. So we've got Mark Cavendish moving back to Dekernic Quickstep where he will be riding a specialized Tarmac SL7. So with Chris Froome also moving over to Israel Startup Nation, he moves from a Pinarello Dogma F12, which is what he rode for Ineos for a number of years, onto Factors VAM. Now he had been riding that Dogma for a very long time in the Pro Peloton, so that is going to be quite a difference. And finally, one of the other really interesting changes is that Bike Exchange, formerly Mitchell and Scott, are no longer on Scott's, they are on Bianchi's. And the team are riding either the Specialissima or the Ultra XR4. Now, what's really interesting is that they've released these bikes not in Bianchi's traditional Celeste. So next up, we're gonna have a look at some product that our tech team has on test at the moment. So first up, we have Simon Smythe with some very fancy looking shoes, and then we've got Stefan with some new tires. So because of social distancing measures, we film these separately. At some point during the course of this year, it would be really great to get us all together, but we can't do that at the moment. So first, over to Simon. So my product for this month is this brand new pair of shoes from Specialized. So these are a sprint specific shoe developed with and for Sam Bennett, the green jersey winner at the Tour de France. Sam Bennett realized that his foot was lifting up inside the shoe when he was sprinting, when he was exploding out of the saddle, there'd be what Specialized described as a lag. To brace his foot for him, Specialized have designed this closure system where the strap braces against the heel, the heel cup here. This, this, this is one single strap that comes around here and it takes out the volume from the, the inside of the shoe, forcing the arch down into the sole, which is uh, what Bennett asked for. 
and which is the, uh, the area where a gap appears. The other thing they did was to eliminate any of the, the points on a shoe which can, can cause pressure, the edges of a tongue. They said that the, just a one millimeter step on a tongue can eventually cause a pressure point. It can start hurting. So instead they've got this sock to replace the tongue, just so that there's one single smooth surface over the top of the foot. The sock section is made of a, a Dyneema stretchy mesh, um, which is very soft on the inside, very stretchy. Yeah, we were worried at the, at the launch, the Zoom launch, that it was going to get really filthy really quickly, but we were assured that it actually has a, uh, a, a repellent coating so that it's not going to get as dirty as you think. So the sole is actually, this was, this was pretty interesting, but they said that the sole is actually the same carbon as the S-Works 7. They kept the sole the same, the cleat position is the same. What they did was just improve the closure so that there's no foot, the foot's completely immobilized. The Aries is going to be available in uh, other colorways, and not just white, thank goodness for us, in, in Britain in January. It's also going to be available in red and black and plain black. And Specialized think that they're going to sell more black Aries than white ones in the UK. So these are going to retail at £375, which is £15 more than the S-Works 7. Yeah, they, they come in, they're, they're pretty much really what you'd expect to pay for a pro-level shoe. Compared to other shoes in the Peloton, you've got the City Shot, which costs £350, the Giro Imperial, 375 the, the price is pretty much ballpark. You've got even more expensive shoes than this, the Mavic Comet Ultimate, as worn by Dan Martin, goes for 630 so... So really, um, it, it's, it, it's a sort of average price for a pro-level shoe. Um, as for the weight, 220 grams per shoe, which is slightly less than the S-Works 7. And I'm guessing that that's because it doesn't really have the, the same tongue arrangement. They've probably managed to save a little bit of weight there. This shoe is not going to replace the S-Works 7, which is the all-rounder pro-level shoe. It's going to be available alongside the S-Works 7, um, like the very lightweight Exos and the very ventilated Ventus. Okay, so Stefan, this month I believe you've got a couple of sets of tyres to show us. That's right, I've got the Schwab X1 Bytes and the Schwab G1 Ultra Bytes. Uh, starting with the Ultra Bytes, I've got them here, set up on uh, some DT Swiss rims. Yeah, I've been riding around for the past uh, few weeks, um, yeah, getting to grips um, with what they have to offer. So starting with the Ultra Bytes, tell me a little bit, a little bit about the defining features of that tyre uh, and the kind of key characteristics you would expect from that tyre. Uh, yes, so these are some of the most aggressive gravel tyres on the market, they're most aggressive for sure in Schwab's range, and they're designed for rocky conditions, particularly uh, loose rocky climbs, where traction um, is the most important uh, factor. Is it specifically the tread pattern that they have tailored for that? Are there other elements of it? Um, yeah, so they're particularly wide and offering uh, a lot of comfort, a lot of cushion and yeah, particularly a wider contact area to deliver that traction. Um, they, come in, <clears throat> they come in a few different sizes, starting at 40mm in 700c and going up to 50mm, so that's 2 inches wide. Um, a similar width to mountain bike tyres from about 10 years ago, so yeah, truly are very chunky. And in the 650b option, uh, they're available in only a 50mm size, and so um, as, yeah, as gravel tyres go, these are on, on the wider side of the spectrum. Okay, cool. And the other tyre that you've got, uh, can you tell me a bit about that one as well? Yeah, so I've also got the Schwalb X1 Bytes, and this is ostensibly a cyclocross tyre, and they come naturally in a 33mm width, and they are the most aggressive in the cyclocross range. So often the tyres that are catered a bit more towards, uh, towards that really thick mud, so the cyclocross tyre might not provide quite so much grip on the road. Uh, is that what you're expecting if you were to compare the, this gravel version versus the cyclocross version? Would you expect the gravel one to ride a little bit better on the road on sort of mixed terrain rides? Um, well, for mixed terrain rides, the um, gravel tyres, uh, with their extra cushion, do provide a lot more protection for the rims. With the cyclocross tyre, for to get enough grip, you've got to run them at really quite low pressures. And with that, uh, if you get to any rocks or roots, um, you'll just uh, blast straight through the, um, the, the cushioning from the tyre and then um, start dinging your rims. 
But um, with the gravel tyres, um, yeah, there's a lot more support there and it does protect the rims uh, significantly. In terms of the road riding, the gravel tyres are significantly faster. I think that the grip um, when it comes uh, to tarmac sections is pretty comparable, um, but uh, it's yeah, obviously uh, a lot more comfortable um, going over rougher sections on the gravel tyres. Ah, so both these tyres retail for £60, which puts them at the um, premium end of um, the gravel and cyclocross um, tyre market. But to be honest, with the performance that both of them display, I think that that price is uh, pretty well justified. So this is the new Lapierre Aircode DRS. It's the third iteration of the Aircode since the original was launched in 2014. It's actually already won a big, a big prize, which is the points competition in the Giro with Arnaud Demar, the FDJ sprinter, who also won four Giro stages on it. So um, it's really literally um, burst onto the, onto the scene. How is it different from the previous one? Um, it's a lot more integrated. It's a lot more aerodynamic. It's really gone the way of uh, most, most aero bikes in, in integration. There's literally nothing visible at the front here. No cables, no wires, nothing at all. It's very smooth indeed. You've got the uh, little feature of the fork. Um, hardly any gap there. It just really blends straight into the down tube down there. So it's, uh, the, the rim brakes have gone. It's, uh, it's disc brake only now, like a lot of aero bikes. So Lapierre have um, completely redesigned the, the seat tube, top tube and seat stay juncture there. You've got the seat stays flowing straight into the top tube, bypassing the seat tube. The idea is that the seat tube can, is, is isolated and it can move a little bit more, can provide a little bit more comfort, which was another one of Lapierre's aims. We first saw that on the Zellius standard road bike, um, also used by the FDJ team. Originally it was said to, to reduce weight because you could reduce some of the, the, the bulk of the point where all the, the tubes meet. So Lapierre said the goal was to make the bike more aerodynamic, um, more comfortable and stiffer too. Whereas other brands have been making the geometry a bit more accessible, uh, not just for pros, but for the, uh, the weekend riders that are gonna be riding their bikes as well. Lapierre have gone in the opposite direction with this bike and they've made the geometry steeper, even more aggressive. The new air code has really short chain stays, 405 millimeters, which is five millimeters shorter than the standard 410, which most manufacturers go with. That means it's gonna have a really, really, really aggressive feeling back end, really good power transfer. Um, but at the same time, it has the same wheelbase as pretty much the same wheelbase as the specialized Tarmac SL7. So that's gonna mean that the Lapierre has a little bit of extra front center measurement, which is just gonna give it that little bit of extra stability at speed. Okay, so, so this top model, the, uh, the Airco DRS 8.0, cost 6,299 pounds, quite a bit cheaper than uh, some of its competitors. And this is partly because Lapierre has used Altegra Di2 rather than Durace for the top model, which is a, an unusual step, but I think one that um, a lot of riders are gonna, are gonna welcome because it does knock quite a good chunk off the price. And it weighs 7.5 kilos, which is, uh, which is a good weight for an aero bike. So there are, there are four models available uh, to, to, the, to the consumer. Uh, the top two models um, come with a type of bar which allows you to, to bolt on aero extensions, so literally turning it into a time trial bike. They, they've got that much, uh, that much faith in its, in its aero capabilities that you could actually put these extensions on and ride it as a time trial bike. Lapierre supplies the, the extensions with it, um, with those, to, those top two models. Um, it would be interesting to try it. We, we have them here. This is, the, this is the top model. This is the 8.0. It comes with those extra extensions. Um, we plan to give it a go. I think, uh, I think it's good. it would make a very fast TT bike. One other thing we wanted to mention is our new Heritage Cycling Weekly kit. So the magazine, having been founded in 1891, is 130 years old this year. Towards the end of last year, we released these casual t-shirts and we've now got some Heritage Cycling kit. It is in red and black, which is a nod to the colours that we've used ever since we stopped printing in black and white. You can find more information about the kit on the Cycling Weekly website and you can buy it direct from miltag.cc. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be back with another episode in March. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button and subscribe to see more of our content.